In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, who by his understanding made the heavens, who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, the sun to govern the day, the moon and the stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. To the one who remembered us in our lowest state and freed us from our enemies and who gives food to every creature, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Scripture proclaims that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, the eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Move us to thank you every day for your generous gifts. Teach us to use our gifts aright, so that whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we do it all to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Amen. Dear thankful believers of our God, senior citizen moments. For those of you here who are classified as senior citizens, I do not bring this up to make fun of you, but all of you know what a senior citizen moment is. As we get older, we tend to become more forgetful. But it's not just senior citizens who have senior citizen moments. We all know what it's like to enter into a room and then we say to ourselves, why am I here? I had a purpose for being here, but I can't remember it. Even little children can have senior citizen moments. How many times have you told your children to wash their hands before they eat, to brush their teeth before going to bed, or to look both ways before crossing the street, and yet, what do they do? They forget. 
But today, I'm not focusing on senior citizen moments, but rather on sinful, forgetful moments. As a nation, we just celebrated Thanksgiving, giving thanks for everything that we have. But as Christians, we don't give thanks just one day out of the year. We are to give thanks each and every day of our lives. And we don't give thanks to what we have. We don't give thanks to the people in our lives. We are not to give thanks to ourselves. But as Christians, we are to give thanks to the Lord. But unfortunately, we don't always give Him thanks. And we often tend to forget about the Lord in our lives. That's exactly what Moses warned the Israelites about that we heard this morning. He said, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. When Moses spoke these words, the Israelites had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because of their sin. But now the Lord was going to bring them into the land of Canaan, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land that he had promised to give to his people 400 years earlier. Therefore, Moses told the people not to forget about the Lord, but to thank Him, give praise to Him, and follow His commands and His decrees. Isn't it interesting that what Moses said over 3,000 years ago applies to us as well? One reason we are not to forget the Lord is because of the relationship that we have with Him. Notice that Moses says, The Lord, your God. As mankind, we all have a generic relationship with the Lord. Because it is He who made us and gave us life. We didn't bring ourselves to life. It is not our parents who gave us life. It is the Lord our God who gave us life. Therefore, since He made us, we are His. But we don't just have a generic relationship with God, as if He is distant from us and no longer cares about us. Rather, as mankind, we have a very personal relationship with God. That relationship started at the moment that we were conceived. At that moment, Scripture tells us that God knit us carefully in our mother's womb. God gave us our body and souls, our eyes, ears, and all of our members, our mind, and all of our abilities. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is no one who is exactly like us in every way. We are special and unique to our God. And the personal relationship we have with God 
does not end there. It continues to this very day. God tells us that he knows the very number of hair on our head. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He is always with us, watching over us. And as Christians, we have the most unique relationship with our God. He is our Heavenly Father. We can approach God in prayer without any fear and with complete confidence that He listens to what we have to say and He will answer our prayers. Therefore, knowing how God has made us, knowing that we have a personal relationship with Him, knowing how much He loves us, this moves us to give thanks to Him. Not to forget Him, but to praise Him and follow His commands and His decrees. But that is not the only reason we are not to forget the Lord. Another reason we are not to forget Him is because He gives us everything that we need. And unfortunately, our sinful nature makes us to forget this. Moses said, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God. You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Isn't it interesting that when life is not going well, that's when we remember the Lord. But when life is going well, which gives us all the more reason to remember the Lord, we tend to forget about Him and only focus on ourselves. Our sinful nature can even try to justify this. We all fall prey to it because we can say, hey, it's not God who works 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, every day of the week. It's not God who pays the bills and buys the groceries. It's not God who takes care of the house and my vehicle. It's not God who plants the seeds in my garden, pulls out the weeds and gathers the fruit and the vegetables. It's not God who takes care of my kids, changes their diapers, instructs them, and in some ways, put up with them. I'm the one who does all of that. And I'll be honest with you, your sinful nature, in a way, is correct. It is not the Lord your God who does all of these things. But here is where our sinful nature fails and misleads us. Moses said, But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your fathers as it is today. It is God who blesses us with a job. He blesses us with the ability 
to work at our job. He blesses our job to make money so that they can pay us. It is God who has blessed us with a home that we could purchase or a vehicle that we can drive in. It is God who has blessed our gardens to give us fruit and vegetables. And even if you don't have a garden, it is God who has blessed farmers who have provided food at the markets so that you can buy it. It is God who blesses us with children. And even though at times they may stress us out, think about all the joy that your children give to you. And here's a great grace of our God. Without us even asking or thanking God for these things, He graciously gives us everything that we need. To put this into perspective, Imagine if tomorrow you only had what you gave thanks to God on this day. What would you have? To our shame, I think most of us wouldn't have a single thing because we don't always thank God. We often forget about our Lord. And to do that is nothing more than sin. Therefore, the Lord our God should be the one who forgets about us. He shouldn't give us a single thing. And on top of that, He should take away everything that we have. But the Lord our God does not do that. Because one, He is gracious, and that will never change. And two, because of Jesus. Without us even asking for a Savior or thanking Him for it, our God sent Jesus to be our Savior. When you look at Jesus, you see someone who never forgot the Lord and always gave him thanks. When Jesus was surrounded by thousands of people and he only had five loaves of bread and two fish, he looked up to heaven and thanked God. When Jesus was at the Last Supper with his twelve disciples, on the night that he was going to be betrayed, he took the bread and the wine and he gave thanks to the Lord. Even though Jesus was born in a poor family, he had no place to call his own when he grew up. He relied on others to support him. He did not grumble or complain. But he thanked his heavenly Father. And even when Jesus grew in popularity because of his miracles and his teachings, he did not become proud and forget the Lord. But rather he did everything to give praise to the Lord our God. Therefore, since God sent us a perfect Savior, and since He gives us everything that we need, let us not forget the Lord, but always give thanks to Him. And one final reason we are not to forget the Lord is because it is the Lord our God who protects us. Moses said, The Lord your God brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful desert, 
that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the desert, something your fathers had never known, to humble and to test you, so that in the end it might go well with you. The Lord rescued his people from their slavery in Egypt. And even when they wander in the wilderness for 40 years, that land with its scorpions and snakes, even when they had a lack of food and water, it was the Lord who protected them. He guarded them from all evil. The Lord our God has done the same thing for us. Although we were never slaves in Egypt, by nature, we were all slaves to sin, death, and the power of the devil. But Jesus rescued us from that slavery by his death on the cross. And Jesus didn't grumble and complain about that. He actually thanked God and rejoiced to do this. For Scripture says, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scoring its shame. Therefore consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Because of Christ, we have been rescued, saved, and justified from every sin, power, and death of the devil. But that's not the only evil that the Lord protects us from. You and I have no idea how much evil Satan and his demons have wanted to bring into our life. But the Lord did not allow it. He knows how much we can handle. And He will not give us more than we can bear. But even when the Lord in His wisdom allows evil and suffering into our lives, He gives us two promises. One, he promises that in all things he works for the good of those who love him. We may not always know it or ever understand it, but that's what he promises. And two, when evil and suffering happen in our lives, he promises to make us stand up over it. We are not alone as we endure that evil and suffering. He is always with us. He will always take care of us. Therefore, since the Lord protects us and guards us from all evil, we are not to forget Him. Therefore, my brothers and sisters in Christ, although our nation has celebrated thanksgiving. Continue to thank the Lord your God each and every day. Do not forget Him. Do not forget the Lord, because it is He who made us, and we have a personal relationship with Him. Do not forget the Lord, because He gives us everything that we need. Do not forget the Lord, because He guards and protects us from all evil, and has sent Jesus to be our Savior, which means one day we will be with Him forever in heaven, and always give Him thanks and give Him praise. Amen. Please rise. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds.
through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now confess our Christian faith by using the words of Luther's explanation of the first article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that God created me and all that exists, and that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind, and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, and all I own, and all I need to keep my body and life. God also preserves me by defending me against all danger, guarding and protecting me from all evil. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise, to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Lord of heaven and earth, you made all things beautiful. You have provided green forests and refreshing streams. You have arranged the orderly procession of day and night for our work and rest. Thank you for the mountains and the prairies, the roaring sea and the gentle breeze. Thank you for roofs that shelter us, for clothing that protects us, and for food and drink that nourishes us. Thank you for our work, for projects that are done well, and for the approval of supervisors and teachers. Thank you for all who serve at night to make our days more pleasant. Thank you for associates at work, for their encouragement and praise, and for the joys of human friendships. Thank you for our cities and our countrysides, for farms and factories, for streets and highways, and for all of life that flows so swiftly before us. Thank you for children at play, their boundless energy, and their shouts of joy and laughter. Thank you for the morning greetings we receive, and for all the smiles that come from faces loved by you. Thank you for Christian parents, for their affection and their care. Hear us, Lord, as we give thanks for personal blessings. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for his coming to us in word and sacraments, for his giving and forgiving, and for listening to our prayers. Receive our gifts and offerings as, we sacri as our sacrifice of praise. Lead us in thankful living today and always. Amen. And hear us, Lord, as we also join to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the rest of the past night, and for the gift of a new day, with its opportunities for pleasing you. 
Grant that we may pass its hours in the freedom of your service. And when evening comes, give you thanks again. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.